Uh, first, I'd like to thank our fans for doing an outstanding job on Sunday. Um, you gave us energy and life, and uh, we need you this Sunday against Cleveland, and hopefully you can be even louder on Sunday. Uh, with that, I'll open it up for questions. What stands out to you about Cleveland's offensive line? Um, they do a nice job. You know, they, they block well together. Um, they're a physical group. Um, you know, they got two backs that do a great job of running with physicality that have really good vision. So um, we're going to have our hands full. Andre, um, Mike was saying the other day, just with a lot of the new starters, he thought that you know, maybe they haven't completely gelled yet. I guess what, what's your, your viewpoint on that with uh, how these guys – um, are coming together and sort of trying to grow each week. Well, I mean, I, I think it could be a little bit of that. I, I think also what happens, too, you know, when you want to win so bad sometimes, um, you know, sometimes you get caught up in trying to make plays to help the team win instead of just settling down and doing your job. And I think, you know, that was one of the things that we did well as a coaching staff at half at halftime was to get them to understand it's just about just go do your job. Line up where you're supposed to line up, execute your job, and tr trust the other 10 guys out there with you. And to me, I think that was the biggest thing that helped us in the second half of the game is this we just played together and it wasn't anybody trying to be superhuman and make plays. And, you know, sometimes when you want to win so bad, you kind of get into that mode. And I think the guys settled down and just, and just played and, and did their job. When you talk about halftime adjustments, how often is it just kind of doing that, telling guys to stick to the script and, and trust what we worked on all week as opposed to having to change things on the fly? Well, it, it really, it kind of happens quite a bit. You know, it kind of happens quite a bit, and especially when you're in a situation where the guys really want to win. You know, they're, they're not doing it uh, to be rogue. You know, they're doing it because they know they're good players, and maybe I can make a play to turn things around. And, and when you do that, you really expose the defense more than you help the defense. And so, you know, a lot of times as a coach, you just have to remind them that, hey, it just comes down to us doing our job, executing, playing fast, playing with physicality, and that by itself will, will make good things happen. And hopefully they saw what happened in the second half of the game and were able to start off playing that way on Sunday. What's it like, Andre, going against somebody like Stefanski who has so much knowledge of what the Vikings defense likes to do? No, nah, I'm not worried about it. It works both ways, right? We know what he likes to do, too. So, you know, to me, it evens out, right? I mean, but both sides know each other very well, and, you know, so it evens out. It's not like it's a one-way street. So it's not really that big of a concern for me because, you know what, Kevin's not blocking anybody. He's not throwing a pass. He's not catching a pass. He's not tackling anybody. So what it comes down to is how well their players play and how well our players play. That's what the game's going to come down to. Zim said earlier in the week just um, it was tough on first and second down with the way that they wouldn't let you get some of those substitutions in. How, how do you have to go about like a plan B when, you know, I don't know, Griffin and, and Sheldon get stuck. I don't know if that's the right word. They get stuck in there. They have to play those downs when you can't rotate the guys that you want in. Well, it really didn't happen that way. It kind of happened the opposite way, is that we said, okay. Sorry, third, third down. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what ended up happening is we ended up putting that group on the field for, for, for first and second down. So we wouldn't be stuck the other way. You see what I'm saying? And we did that for about two series in the second half of the game, in the first half of the game. And I said, forget that. I'm getting my big boys back out there. I don't care what they do. And that's what we did. You see what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I mean, you, you just got to trust with your gut that you're playing and why you got certain guys out there for certain reasons, that that's the reason why you have them out there. You know, so uh, like I said, in the second quarter, I think it was, we went two series with, with our nigger group playing, you know, base downs. Um, and then we went back at the end of that quarter and went back to our, our regular group going out there. What's making Everson so good? At, like you, being able to trust him if he does have to play that three technique role at this point of his career, is this like a good fit where you can, I mean, did you use him as much inside earlier on or not really necessary? No, no, he, he, he played uh, uh, quite a bit inside before I got here. And uh, when I first got here, I, I wanted him to focus solely on being the defensive end, even though I knew he had talent rushing inside because I wanted him to master that. Um, and then, you know, certain games, matchup-wise, I would throw him in there over a guard every now and then. Um, so, 
you know, he's comfortable playing in there. You know, he did a he did a nice job in the run game in those two series I was telling you about uh, playing three technique in there. So um, it's not uncomfortable for him to be able to do it. He understands how to play the run game in there. Uh, he understands how to rush guards in there. He knows that things happen so much faster in there than they do outside. Uh, so, but he he did a nice job. And I, and your first question you asked, what makes him so good? I, you know, he's a veteran. Um, it's not new to him, and he understands his. Um, the thing that makes him good is his explosiveness, how explosive he is, and so that's the part of his game that that have started to come back. He how said, is, uh, Shel "How is Sheldon Richardson doing, and how is he handling being a reserve for the first time in his career?" Um, he hasn't said a word to me about it. He goes out every day and works. Um, I think he flashed a lot in the game on Sunday, pass rush wise. Um, he had several plays when he was up in the quarterback's face. Um, you know, I thought he did a good job rushing the passer for us uh, on Sunday. So um, I don't think I don't think his role is an issue for him at all. Anderson told us that he's not a spring chicken anymore. But 12 years in, do you see any decline physically? No, not not at all. And and it's my job to make sure that I don't wear him out. You know, that's the most important thing. I mean, it's not just him. It's all players that get into this this age area and the, the wear and tear on your body as many years as you've gone as playing 60, 65 plays, you know, every game. Um, so I just got to make sure that I do a good job of, of not overplaying him and wearing, wearing him out because this is a long marathon for the season and we're going to need him, you know, the whole season. Michael. <clears throat> Michael Pierce mentioned that Delman Tomlinson got a game ball this week. What did you like about what he did on Sunday? Uh, I mean, he, I thought he rushed really well. I mean, that was a really nice uh, game that him and um, I think it was it was on Griff Sack. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he got great he got he got great penet penetration and uh, Griff fell in right behind him and D had a nice rush on the other side. Um, you know, some of the things that don't show up on the stat sheet is, you know, he gets double teamed and they can't move him. It's like a, a wall right there. So now the guard and the tackle have to stay on him instead of when they double you, they're not supposed to stay there forever. One of the guys is supposed to eventually come off and go get the linebacker. But because they can't move him, both those guys have to stay there. And now the backer's free over the top. Um, you know, Dalvin's playing very well. And, I, and I'm... I'm very happy that he's that he's with us. Did you think you'd see this version of Daniil this quickly into the season, just coming off the injury? Yeah, as long as he was healthy. As long as he was healthy, I had no doubt in my mind about that. As long as he was healthy, he was he's young. You know, it's not it's not a 32 year old. You know, coming off a, a injury and having to miss a year. You know, he's still he's still young. So um, there was no doubt in my mind as long as he was healthy that he was going to play like he plays. Uh, and then plus, you know, the type of person that D is, you know, even though he wasn't playing, he was studying himself. He was making me send him videos of, of him and, and how he played in the run in the past. So it wasn't that he wasn't uh, keeping his mind on football. He was still doing that too. So um, there, was, there was no question in my mind about that. Coach, I know that you obviously don't coach him directly, but just at practice and stuff, um, with Brian O'Neill kind of stepping into that leadership role with the offensive line group, I guess what do you see from him kind of at his personality or his mentality that makes him good for that group? Yeah, I, I, I think it's been a lot easier for Brian to step forward and Riley leaving because, you know, Riley was the leader of the group and now um, – Brian has stepped forward and, and taken that role, and it's been great for me to be able to see him progress that way. Um, he's vocal. Um, he leads by example. And, you know, um, he talks to my guys a lot. Yeah. And I'll give you a perfect example. This, is, this was – I went and told Zim, I said, this is one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. So we did one-on-one -on -one pass rush, and it was the week we were going to go play Arizona. Okay? And when we do it, guys take two reps, two rushes in a row, and that's all they get because you got to get everybody else a rep. Well, Brian took his two. It went down the line. Well, the next tackle was supposed to be in. Brian was back up there again. Daniil, okay, called D out for two more. And it went back down the line. He was back out there again. DJ, okay, so he was calling my guys out. 
right? And he kept going. And I'm like, you know, that is impressive. He understood he was who he was playing against this week. He was going to take as many one-on-one -on -one reps as he could against the best guys we have to prepare himself to play on Sunday. So I walked up to him after practice. I told him, man, that was one of the most impressive things I've ever seen a guy do. You know, so he gets it, and that's why he's such a good player. Coach Stepanski used to talk a lot about making the same things look just a little bit different and, and getting the defense off kilter that way. I was just wondering how you can advise you guys to, to cut through that clutter and recognize. Well, you just got to play what you see. And when I say that, you know, I call it eye candy, right? So, you know, you line up with three guys over here, and then one guy will move, right? And then another guy will move. Well, before they snap the ball, they have to end up in a finish formation. Okay, so you can't worry about all the eye candy. You have to play what the finish formation is. And, and then from there, you got to play your keys and targets from that point on. So it's just getting the guys comfortable with, with not their focus being so much on all of the eye candy, the motions and the shifts and all that other kind of stuff. Hello, Coach. Yeah, what do you mean lean on that kind of pre-snap motion? So just compared to other opponents you've looked at? Um, well, we've seen it every day when he was here. So it's still, not be, to me, I, that's the thing is, you know, you look at it and it's like I told the guys a day. I mean, offensively, we practiced against this every day. Now, but now what we got to do is defeat the guys he has there. I don't know if that makes sense to you what I'm saying, right? So it's not that it's unusual for us to see all this. We, did, we had to go against it every single day in practice when he was here, right? So they've done that. Well, now we have to play against their five offensive line, their two good tight ends, uh, Beckham, the receiver. They got two great running backs. The quarterback's a good player. So it's about those guys. Okay, We can't lose focus on that because those are the guys that we got to go defeat and defend to give us a chance to win the game. So it's not like our guys haven't had that experience of seeing motions and shifts over and over again. That's what we saw every day in practice when he was here. With the way they like to play offense, you had mentioned in Seattle wanting to get your big guys back out there. Do you expect this kind of game to be a long one for them, just considering how they like to play offense with the bigger formations, running the ball? All yeah, that? I mean, you know, we're prepared if, if they make, you know, go with a lot of big people um, um, to defend it. You know, he'll put big people in the game and give you empty. So just because he puts three tight ends in the game doesn't mean you're going to get tight, thick formations like you think you're going to get. He'll put those people out there and then give you empty. You know, so you have to be aware of that too. Um, so um, I think we got a good plan going, and it just comes down now to the guys having a great week of practice and going out and executing it on Sunday. In working with him and planning for him, what do you like about what Kevin's done with that team? Um, you know, I, I, first of all, I think Kevin is a great human being, okay, and he's an outstanding football coach. Uh, so I'm not surprised that he's had success over in Cleveland. You got to remember, I coached in Cleveland too. So I understand what he's going through over there. So uh, I'm not surprised that he's done a great job with that. And um, I get it. He was here a long time, and, and people want to make it about Kevin. But it's not about Kevin. You know, it's about his players. That's what it's about. And every week in this league, you run across someone that you've had close contact with and that you coached with before, right? I coached with Pete Carroll, right? So we had a – Great conversation before the game, a lot of hugging, laughing, giving me a bad time about being a grandpa, right? Then talk to him after the game. But, you know, there's no – during the game, I'm trying to beat him. You know, we're trying to win. So it's the same thing. I have a great deal of respect for Kevin. I love him, okay? But I want to beat him on Sunday. And I understand it's not about him. It's about his players. And for us to win the game, that's what we have to understand. We can't make it about him. It's about his players. Knowing what he's going through, you mean just turning around that franchise? Yeah. Yeah, it's a different, you know, it was a different deal there, you know, and, and he's done a great job. I mean, they've, they've been down for a long time, and, you know, they've had a lot of good players. When you draft in the top five pick year after year after year after year, you got great players on your team, and they still were struggling. Okay, so he's, he's done a, good, a great job of, of figuring out the pitfalls there and what he needs to do. Uh, to get that place to have success. So I have a great deal of respect for what he's done there. But it doesn't surprise me because of the type of person that he is.